Hi everyone, it's Bobby. I am back with another design team project for Country Craft Creations. This one is using the Coffee and Friends by, is it Cardabella? No, it's Echo Park. It's by Echo Park. This is the cutest collection and I have had it once before and when she gave me a choice of what to send the next time, I asked for this one because I gave the first one away. <laughs> and I love this paper. So I just used one of the cut-aparts, and these flowers are from Country Craft Creations, but they're ones she sent me with a different collection that I still had left. So I used these here, just cut out a little flag banner. This is a little die cut, and it just says, Today is a good day, and then I added a couple buttons here. And I just kept the side and the back very plain. So I used the sign seam binding. Some days you just can't talk, you know. <clears throat> and I attached them through an eyelet to the inside. Now I hope you love this first page because this is something new. But it took me a little while to figure it out. I have seen it before and I contacted the lady where I saw it. And it was with her permission that I recreate it. As long as it wasn't identical to hers. So I changed the size and the closure. So that made it different. Um, I added two little envelopes down here and a couple of little tags and my pocket is holding a die cut coffee and good friends make for a perfect day and then you can either journal or add a photo mat to the back my pocket is magnetized it opens down now, are you ready for this da -da 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 -da. isn't that cool and I'm calling this the flip-flop page I just love that. I think it is so cool. Just up and down. So it holds four photos. Plus if you put one on here that would be five. And then you actually could journal on the back of these little tags. I don't think I have anything on the... No, they're um, double-sided paper, but you could put white on them and write a little message. These envelopes are actually fastened shut, but I suppose you could leave them open if you wanted to. Okay, so that's that. <clears throat> then on the first, I just have two hinges in here. On the first hinge I have a pocket with a pullout, and I don't have anything on it, it's just for photo mats. And there's a pocket on top of the pocket that holds two tags. This one says Cup of Comfort. Has a little, this is from the uh, sticker sheet as well as the cup. And this is Tammy's seam binding again. This one says You Perk Me Up. And they're just white on the back. And this one says Coffee and Then the World. This paper's just so pretty. So. And I have a second project almost completed with this that I will show you in the next day or so. I just have a few things left to do to it. And I love this next page. And I kept this pretty plain on the back so that you could put a photo mat or whatever on it. I love this page. I made two little photo mats. And I fussy cut some of the flowers out of this paper collection. And I just placed them so it looks like they're peeking out from behind the papers in this one would be to make a journaling note. Then when you flip it over, we have a flap that lifts up for two more photos. Now, I was going to put Velcro here, but I don't really think it needs it. It stays down pretty good. I just didn't want to put another magnet so that it wouldn't interfere with the magnets here. Uh, this came from one of the sheets. Um, one of them, the back side, had all kinds of little quotes. It looked like a chalkboard's it was really cute, and then these little coffee cups were also on this sheet here, and I cut them out. This sheet is a pocket, and it says, Great Things Take Time, and I have one photo mat in here, and it's roomy enough that you can get a couple more in there. And the same on the back side, another photo mat in the pocket, and I have a little small doily with two coffee cups, and this is from a die that I had. This is another one of those little chalkboard things. It says, Life Happens, Coffee Helps. And this says, Today is Full of Possibilities. Then on the second hinge, 
Oh yeah, all of this is the second hinge. I meant to show you that this is hinge one, and all the rest of it is the second hinge. So in this, this is the last page, and it has a pocket, and I just have a rectangle doily behind it with two of the cut aparts, and they're playing on the back so that you can add a photo or some journaling. And I have two more of those little chalkboard cutouts from the design paper. This one says, the good old days are still to come, especially after a great cup of coffee. <laughs> This one says life begins after coffee, and then I have, an, excuse me, another little coffee cup there. And then on the back side of that, I just have a belly band with a photo mat, and it's just plain on the back. And then we have our second flip-flop page. This one says on a bad day, there's always coffee. So again, it's magnetized. It looks like this. Da -da -da, da -da -da. I just love this. Sorry about that. My battery cut out. So anyway, I was trying to say you would think this would be very difficult, and it looks to be, but it really isn't. It's not that hard. So there will be a full tutorial following this walkthrough, and then I will have another project for you in a couple of days. I hope you love this little album. I certainly do, but then I wouldn't show it to you if I hated it. <laughs> All right, guys, that's what I have for you today. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm excited to see what you create if you decide you want to make one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Hello, everyone. It's Bobby. I am working on my next design collection, which is the Coffee and Friends. I had this collection once before, and I really loved it. It was so much fun to work with. I've got to move stuff around here. So I'll make sure I'm in camera range and that should be pretty good okay um, I normally I put my outside papers on last but I had to do them first this time because I want to run my ribbon through this eyelet and kind of bury it under the papers on the inside so that's why I've done that and I just used the stripe and one of the florals to wrap it I haven't decided on embellishments or anything yet but I want to run my papers or my ribbons through to the inside and then I'll secure them with some score tape. But I wanted to show you how we make the flip-flop page, which is going to be here and here, and then I'll have two pages on the hinge. And this is just very small. It's, I think, uh, is it five and a half? By six and a half. But it's going to fit in a gift, gift box gift basket that I'm making. Jeez, I can't talk this morning. Okay, so what we're going to do is there's two pieces to make this flip-flop. This piece is nine and a half by four and a half and you're going to score it at one half. Oops. And this is just uh, some generic cardstock I have in my stash that I'm going to use to show you uh, how to score and cut it because what I'm using on the inside of my album is black and it's going to be hard for you to see what I'm doing. So score on the long side. This is the four and a half by nine and a half. You're going to score at one half and six. And then on the eleven by four and a half, you're going to score it in half at five. And that's all there is for the scoring. But we have some cutting to do. So on this long piece, the four and a half by eleven, now these portions are the same, so it doesn't make any difference which one you start with. And I put mine in my scoreboard to start with, and I'm going to make a tick mark at five eighths. And this is a half, so that's four five eighths here. And then I want to go down two and seven eighths. Or two and three quarters, sorry. Two and three quarters. So, from there, I need my T square. And something got spilled on it. Let me wipe it off. I don't want to get my paper dirty. Probably a little coffee, knowing me. 
I've always got a cup of coffee hanging around. Maybe that's why I like this collection so much, because I'm a coffee addict. It's actually kind of grungy looking. <laughs> I've used this ruler forever. I should have done that before I got on camera, but I didn't realize it had anything on it. That's better than it was. Let me lay these aside here. Okay. Hope it's not too damp. So you're going to make a straight line across at this two and three quarters. And we'll take our pencil marks off after. After we're done cutting. So there is that. And we also need a five in five eighths inch going this way. So let me make a mark up here. So we're going to score. I mean, we're going to make a mark at 5 eighths from the top. And 5 eighths inch down both of these sides. So we're going to have a little box. Down to that mark. Like that. Okay, and then on this one, mm, let me look at my, my prototype. Okay. So with your score line towards you, you're going to measure down two and seven eighths inch. Let's put this on the seven. One, I keep saying two and seven eighths, it's two and three quarters. One, two, and three quarters. And then we need five eighths from the top. So there's five eighths. So let's make those two marks. It's actually the same measurements we did on the first piece, but this time you're doing it below the, where we scored at six, you're working below that score line. And we're going to ma make a mark at this two and three quarters. Then we need to be five eighths of an inch at the top and the bottom. Let me get my ruler because we're working down here. There's five eighths right there. And five eighths right there. We need to mark those. Oops. Get it on the line there. Okay. So this line just, you're not going to cut that one. That's going to be your score line. Oh, so let's erase this in the center just so we don't confuse ourselves. I could have just made it at the edges. And this one we're not cutting. We're going to cut this line, this line, and this line. And then these two are score marks. So again, cut, cut, cut score and score. Okay? Now I already have my black ones done. 
just to save time. So once you have yours cut, you will fold and burnish and keep your edges as straight as possible. And then these are your little score lines that allows it to flip. So make sure it lines up here with your corner. And with this corner. Okay, and then this one. Need to fold it like that. Just stay lined up. Okay, I'll fold these other two later. I just wanted to sh get these folded to show you. And that is not lined up right there. some reason. I will have to fix that. And we're going to burnish this one. Okay. Let's see what we got here. That one looks like it lines up fine. No, it doesn't. Is a hair out of whack. We did just a hair of trim work here. Maybe I didn't cut it straight. Thought I did. Okay. And then this one. Is fine. So what's going to happen is this attaches. I had it folded backwards. Let me refold it. This attaches to this and it folds down like that. score it crookedly. Let me check it. to match. down far enough. Let's 
see. Okay, sorry about that. That was my fault. I had to rescore the one side. I didn't have it scored straight. That is my fault. So this is going to attach to this piece, your half inch. And I'm going to miter just a hair. Just a tiny bit. And we're going to add glue to the inside of that flap. sure our edges line up. So this back piece here is what will attach to your book. And then when you lift it up, you will have but um but um Cool. Then we will have a pocket down at the bottom, which will hold this all down together. Isn't that cool? So, we'll do that one more time. So we're going to fold and burnish. Let's hope I cut this one right. <laughs> way. Make sure they're lined up. short again. I don't think I'm... And it's the same side that I did before. I'm apparently not measuring exactly right. Because this fold here needs to match up here. Right there. And that means this needs to burnish like that so that it lays flat. Okay, there we go. first time. <laughs> I'm going to reburnish this. Okay. Now let's miter this and miter this one. And then we will attach it. Now this was something I saw somebody else do. And I did contact the lady. And I'll put a link in the description box to her page. And you feel free to go over there and look at her designs. She's a very talented person. I did contact her. And it was okay with her if I recreate this page. As long as I change my dimensions. So they weren't exactly like hers, and they're not. My page is smaller than hers, and my closure is different, so I've changed it up to 
be a little bit different, but while it's still the same basic design, but she did not have a name to hers, and I'm calling it the flip-flop page. So that is that. So there you go. That's the second one. And I got a little glue. Alrighty. So that's those for the inside. Then the pocket on page on the first hinge is, and it's all on your cut list, is five and three, or four and three quarters by six. And then we have four by seven and I just rounded the corners and I'm going to trim a little bit of this off don't need all of that and this is going to attach on top of that one and then it will just slip over the hinge but I like to decorate them before I put them in the album I just think it's easier to maneuver the page around when it's on my tabletop instead of... So match up your bottoms and your sides. And I just rounded the corners on them. It will sit on the hinge, go into the album like this, and then I have this little pocket, which is four and a half by three and a half, scored on three sides. I angled the corners and mitered the tops, but I'm not going to attach it until I get my base paper down, and it is going to just sit in the center there. So that is that one. And then for the second hinge, this is a 10 and a half by 12. Okay, so on your 12 inch side, you're going to score it at 6. And well, let's start at the 10. Is it ten and a half? Ten and three eighths. No. Yeah, I did take just a hair off of this. I cut it at ten and a half and I scored scored it in half at five and a quarter. And then I felt like it was just a little bit too much overhang. So I trimmed just an eighth of an inch off of there. And then this one actually is supposed to be a twelve, but it was actually a little bit oversized, so I trimmed it back to twelve and I scored it at six then on the six inch line from the bottom up you're going to cut that six inch line we fold this one back this one forward and this one down that gives you this page we will put um, a hint a pocket down here that will or, um, yeah, it's going to make a pocket, but that will close this up, and you'll have a pocket here. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. Like this. I had it folded wrong. This will give you this page. Then we will put this piece here, and this is 5 by 4, scored in half at 2, and we will... Let me score it and I'll show you. We will glue this to the bottom to close that up. And that way you'll have a side pocket here. And we'll put a notch in it. And then you'll have this page back here. Looks like I didn't cut that wide enough. I'll have to recut that. I need it to be longer so it comes out to the edge. But then, then that right here will be your 
area that slides over the hinge. So that will be your second hinge. So that's my game plan, and I'm going to go cut some papers, and I will be back with you shortly. Okay, guys, I want to give you a quick update. I've been working a little bit on this, and I've started cutting my papers for this first section. And I did add my ribbons, and I ran them through the eyelets and secured them with some score tape. I did um, use some of the... Um, our glitter glue on the ribbons and then I secured it over the top. This is not glued in. I just was going to show you how it kind of looks. But I like to do the covers before I add any of the pages. just gives me more room to work. So what I'm doing over here is this is the pocket and it is attached. Let me show you. I haven't glued this down. It is attached on the back side of this white um, kind of a shiplap or board looking paper and I've inked it with, I've inked everything using weathered wood this time and I've attached two magnets on the back and then I have two magnets under here to hold all these pages down. This is going to get glued in like that and then I'll have a stopper in there. I haven't put anything on this one yet but I wanted to show you the pocket. There's two pieces to the pocket. The largest of the two, and it's on your cut list, the largest of the two is scored on three sides at a half. Then you'll miter your corners and taper your tops. And this is the piece that goes inside the pocket. And I just put <clears throat> a little thumb notch using, I think this is a one inch punch. Yeah, one inch. And I just put a little divot in it and then that'll go over on this side. So what I want to do at this point is I'm going to take this out because it is not glued down yet. And I want to glue this into the book. I'm going to take off the backing for the score tape and take the backing off of these magnets. I always have a hard time with these. There's that one. And that one. Now we need some more glitter glue on here. I just wanted you all to see how I'm putting it together in case you had any questions. And especially, <clears throat> excuse me, in case there's somebody that's not put one together. <clears throat> Goodness! And I like to go around my magnets pretty good with the glue. And give myself a little extra time because that score tape on there is pretty potent. So let's get this on here. And now we can lift this up. Whoops. Boy, those magnets are strong. And I want to burnish that really good. Especially where the magnets are. Now this page is going to glue right up under it, but you want to make sure that it's going to be centered under this pocket. So that's what we want to make sure of. And these magnets are so tight. Just right there is perfect. And I want it down just down from the top, right there. Now let's see if that's centered. I think it needs to come this way just a little. That looks perfect. Okay, what I'm going to do is make... Where's my pencil? Over here. I'm going to make a little mark right here and right here. 
right here just as a guide so I don't get it crooked. And this complete piece gets glued down. And wouldn't you know, as soon as I start recording, the dogs are going to carry on. They've heard a car door. And they're beside their cell. Probably my daughter coming back from her doctor's appointment. Okay. Hush. Put it right up to the top. Where's my mark? Right there. Make sure this is that is not straight. That is straight at the top. Okay, let me open this. Nose itches. Don't you hate that? Get your hands full and then your nose itches. Where's the... What'd I do with it? I'll use this one. So here's what it's going to do when it's opened. Let me put my pen back so it don't dry up on me. There's my burnishing tool. Here's what it's going to do. And that gives you four picture frames. So I've got to finish my strips. I, I was undecided if I should put them on the back, but when you go to fold it up, it shows. So I think maybe I should. But that will flop that way. It'll go that way. And then this. We'll hold it all down. And then what I have for the pocket is these two little tiny envelopes I made. Aren't those cute? And I'm going to put a little banner here with the two little envelopes. And then I made two little tiny flags to go underneath the envelopes. Aren't those cute? And those will just tuck up under here. So that's my game plan. So I will cut out some more papers for this other side. I'll finish this one up and I'll be back. Alright, I just wanted to touch base with you and show you what I've done so far. Um, we went over these two sections. I think I may have shown you this, the magnet, and then this part that lifts out, the flip-flop page. And then... The same process on the opposite side. I haven't got all my embellishments in yet, but I've started on this one a little bit. I have a photo mat in here, and then this one opens out. Also has a magnet, and opens out like this. So that's your second one. And then there's more room in this pocket for more than just one um, embellishment. And also you could you have room under here you could put a photo if you wanted to or journal a journaling spot there we go put this back in the pocket and then I showed you this little folder that's going to sit on the first hinge this being a pocket and this being a pocket and then on the back side there's just room for a photo mat and then what I wanted to show you what I've done with the four pages I showed you how to put it together and here is your hinge the opening for the hinge on the first page I just put one of the cut aparts and then I used some uh, generic white cardstock just where the uh, small photos or journaling might be and I fussy cut some of the flowers from what page what this one from this page. I just cut some of the flowers out and just laid them like they were peeking out from under the pages. And then on the back side of that page I have a little um, flap and there's no magnet. I thought about using a velcro dot but I don't really think it needs anything. It lays pretty flat. And I just cut out one of the um, 
one of the pages, let me see, right here it is. The whole back side of one of the pages has all these little phrases. And I cut a few of those out and I put the one up here that says Co coffee is always a good idea. And I added some of the little coffee cups, which came from another sheet of the paper. One of them has coffee cups and one of them has mugs. This one is the one with the cups. Well, here's the one with the uh, tumblers. And I just cut out three of those and put them there. And then this is the page where you slide the, the four by, I think it was five and a half. But it was the four inch piece and you score at two and then it just slips over to close that and make this a pocket. And I haven't matted these yet, but I will. And there's plenty of room in here for more. And then, of course, there's a pocket on the back side. Again, that isn't matted. Here's another one of those little um, phrases. They look like little chalkboards. This one says, Life Happens, Coffee Helps. And then I had some of these Tim Holtz things. This one says, Today is Full of Possibilities. And I just used some dies from my stash to do this little tiny doily and two coffee cups. And then on this page, I haven't finished it out yet. But I just have a, a photo spot for a mat in the back. And I just put it at an angle. And then I have a couple of the cut aparts, which I need to mat yet. And this is just a little pocket. And then I have a couple more of those little embellishments. And I'll probably cut out some of the coffee cups and stick in this pocket. But you have a pocket in the back. And you have it under this flap and under here. And then on the back side, I just have a belly band, and I have a white photo mat in here, which I haven't matted yet, and that will sit on this hinge here, so that this will correspond with that. I kind of like, like them to relate to each other when they're facing each other. And then this one, oops, when you put it in. This one works with the pink and the greens. And there's blue here and blue here. And then when I put this one in, this green will relate to that. So it all will work out. So I'm going to add those to the album, finish my embellishments, and then I have to do finish my front cover and I'll be through. So I will be back with the final walkthrough, but I just wanted to explain to you what I had. Oh, and I also wanted to tell you, if you have this punch, it is really hard to get rounded corners to match if you just use, if you use the We Are Memory Keepers um, big, you know, like the crocodile style that does the rounded corners. They never match. But if you get this one, and I think it's We Are Memories too, and it's got three different ones on here. If you do your cardstock with the largest one, and then do your design paper with the medium one. It's perfect every time. You can see how it lays perfect. And if you're doing a smaller corner, then use the medium for the cardstock and the small for the design paper. And it matches up every time. So I just discovered that as I was working along. I always bugged me because it never matched. And now it does. So I love this. Love this little tool. All right, that's it. I will be back with the final walkthrough once I get all my embellishments done. And I will show you the finished project. Thanks for watching. See you soon.